talk about living beyond affliction. Living beyond affliction. This is the last Sunday of the month of February, and uh, this month has been dubbed Black History Month or African American History Month. As we all know, at one time we did have one week of celebration, and now that week has been extended to a whole month so that we as a people can be reminded of our history. And also so that as we build that we can certainly observe or acknowledge the recognition of African Americans and the contribution that they have made to the United States of America. I believe that this historical reflection that this historical reminder, that this opportunity for us to review in many ways and to learn in other ways our history is certainly important. It is important because we need to know where we came from and we need to know where we are going and we can't get where we're going and we don't know where we came from. When we think about afflictions, we know that as it would be any other nation of people, African Americans really know about affliction. Sometimes we want to act like we don't, but we really do. We can go back even as far back as when slaves came to America. 1619, the Mayflower came to America with slaves from Africa. And those slaves were brought over with the intent of working the fields of cotton corn and whatever else the master wanted. And uh, as they came to this country and lived, uh, after time, much time passed, after many hanging of men, many raping of women, many dividing of our children and wife from husband, the separation that has plagued us ever since. And as we think about our history, we think about how we were were dehumanized, how we were ostracized, how we were dis discriminated against over those years. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and as a result, we had some people who had some empathy and some sympathy for our plight, and they began to work in the places where they were to help make things better for us. And of course, we know that the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation brought about a source of freedom, and then Martin Luther King came, and then he led the nonviolent march, and then we know that that was the signing of the Bill of Rights, and so on and so on, until we finally got to a place where we don't have to go in the back of the restaurant to buy our food anymore. We don't have to bypass the hotels and motels to rest as we go on our trips. No longer do we go to a bathroom pass by a nice, clean, shiny bathroom, going around the corner, and there's a sign that says, colored on me, and that bathroom was always nasty and dirty. Amen. Some of y'all look at me like you heard this for the first time. Amen. Some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. 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 This is our history. Our young people, our people need to know the history. Yes, sir. We need to know it. Now, some people want us to forget about our history. They want us to think that everything is just peaches and cream. But we know that's, that's not true. We still have a long way to go. Amen. Thank God for Martin Luther King and the nonviolent movement. Amen. Thank God for him. Amen. Thank God for those who stood in the trenches through the NAACP and through other nonviolent movements to make it possible for us to be free in this country. And even though we can go to any school we want to go to now, even though we can go to see any doctor we want to go see, it, even though now we can go into any restaurant we want to go into, hotel, whatever have you, we still have a long way to go. Amen. We have not gotten there yet. We're still enduring the affliction. We're still going through the sufferings. We're still bearing our burdens in the heat of the day. So as we think about this living beyond affliction, we know that Paul was going through much suffering, 
much suffering. He, and not only him, but also those who were Christians in the Corinthian church, they were having a hard time. They were bearing their burdens in the heat of the day. They were having their difficulty trying to do what God really wanted them to do. Now the catch there is that any time you are seeking to do what God wants you to do, you're going to come up against afflictions. You're going to have some persecutions. You're going to have some suffering. You're going to have a hard time. And we see here in the life of Paul that Paul went through much suffering because Paul believed in God. Now Paul was not always saved. There was a time when Paul was not saved. And God, God reached out to him through Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And he was converted to a Christian. And after he was converted to a Christian, he was just as much a more Christian than he was a Pharisee. In other words, when he was in the world, he was in the world real good. Amen. One thing I love about it, he wasn't in the world and up in the church at the same time. When he was in the world, he was in the world. In fact, he was fighting against the church. He was seeking to destroy the people of God. He was seeking to bring down Christendom as they knew it at that time. But Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And I believe that I have a witness here that anyone who meets Jesus, you can never leave the same. You can't do it to save your life. He has a way of changing us from the inside out, making us anew in his name, making us anew in his work, making us anew in our relationship with Almighty God. We must come to the place of realizing that Paul learned to live beyond affliction. That's the only way he could make it when you really think about it. That he had to learn to live beyond affliction. In other words, he had to learn how to remain faithful to that which God called him to do, even though he was going through a hard time. Amen. Many Christians today have not learned that yet. We tend to give in to hard times. We don't stand firm in hard times. Many, many times people today give in to hard times. Amen. Somebody come join the church and give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Go back out in the world and folks start messing with them. Oh, you went down there and joined that church. You think you're somebody now. You think you're better than we are and all that kind of stuff. Y'all know how people do. Y'all know how people do. When you start really giving your life to the Lord, they want to make fun and joke at you and make mockery of you. And so many times people do what? They stop going to church because they want to be in good with those people. Amen, somebody. Now let me tell you one thing. If you're not willing to take a stand for the Lord, there is no need of you even giving your life to the Lord. For everybody who gives his or her life to the Lord, there's going to come a time that you're going to have to take a stand for what you believe. And this is what Paul did. He took a stand for what he believed. Not only Paul, but those who worked with him, Silas and Titus and others who worked as a team with him, they all took a stand for the Lord. I believe that one of the things that's really hurting the Christian movement today is that we don't have enough believers who are willing to stand firm on what they believe. Amen, somebody. The standing firm on what you believe means that the devil would be at you. It means that the devil would seek to distract you. It means that the devil will seek to turn you around. It means that the devil will seek to stop you in your tracks because he does not want you to move forward. He wants you to stand still or go backwards. But we've got to learn how to do what? We got to learn how to live beyond affliction. People today can't stand too much trouble. You can't take too much trouble today. Amen. Start getting kind of tough. They quick to throw in the towel and quit. Amen. But look at the life of Paul. How Paul was able to live beyond affliction. How he was able to remain stable and firm and committed even though he was going through a hard time. So Paul says here in the writing of the text, he says we are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Then in verse 17 he says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. I thought about that, which is but for a moment. When you're in your affliction, it seems like it will never end. 
when you're going through what you're going through, it seems as if it is lasting for an eternity. But let me tell you one thing. You get on the other end and you see the face of God and you look back at those tribulations and those afflictions, he, Paul says, it would be like a moment. A fleeting moment. A moment wherein we have come through and now we can say we're in the hands of God. My friends, today our challenge is to live beyond affliction. To live beyond affliction. Paul faces the challenge of this new ministry. He comes face to face with suffering for the cause of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, needless to say, he is ready because he has a deep and abiding relationship with Jesus Christ. He is saying he has been set apart. He has heard the voice of Jesus that bids him fight on. Not give up. Keep on keeping on. Keep on pressing the mark. Keep on rising up. Keep on doing what you're doing. For God is on your side. Now, now Paul has this treasure of the gospel stored in him. As every believer, Paul is simply a jar, a jar, a jar of clay. But there is a treasure in earthen vessels that gives value to the vessel. Amen. Now is Paul ordained, set apart to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He has been called to go preach the gospel of Jesus, to bid the whole earth his grace receive. He shall be saved that trust the word and be condemned who will not believe. Paul steps out on faith to do God's will, but suffering awaits him on his journey. Struggles, obstacles, challenges, and sufferings came to Paul in many